Jared Leto uses looking like Jesus to his advantage, and it's kind of creepy. So this is him at a Paris fashion show recently, and he's wearing a see-through outfit pictured as Jesus, and you can clearly see his boxers. And his necklace is a chain that is made by nails shaped in a cross, and his gloves is fake blood, and this is replicating him the day he was on the cross, and he's using this for a show. If that doesn't get you a little angry, listen to this. If you don't know, Jared Leto and his brother have a very popular band called 30 Seconds to Mars. First of all, their logo is a little bit sus. It's a cross with a triangle in the middle, and they're running what some people call a cult. So they would host a trip in Croatia that costed anywhere between $1,500 upwards to $6,500 just to be with him. And during this trip, everyone would dress up in all white and he would pose looking like Jesus with his long hair and his arms out. And whenever he would talk, people would sit at his feet and people started to take notice of this trip and they said it was it looked like a cult. Well, he took it to Twitter saying that this is a cult and all of his fans agreed and they said he is the prophet. They were saying stuff like he is the Messiah, just absolutely wild stuff. So that's what I mean when I say he's using this stuff to his advantage. And clearly he's still doing it because just a few days ago he's wearing it at in Paris at a fashion show. And it makes you realize this is a guy who's made it in life big time. What motivates them to still do this? This is someone that I keep my eye on because at first maybe this was for fame, fortune, attention, whatever, he got it. But why is he still doing it? Is there an agenda he has to push? Did he sign something that he has to keep doing this? Is he getting paid to do this right now? Or is there something big coming in the future where he uses this to a massive advantage where a lot of people are affected? Or maybe he's just really bored and is laughing at us and he craves that kind of attention. But who knows? Keep an eye on him in the future. But next, let's talk about some sports conspiracies. Look, you can tell by my hat that I am a Lakers guy. It's not something that I'm proud of. I've been living in the area most of my life and I think that uh, I got to sign some bandwagon forms to change my team. But big news in the sports industry is that Bronny James is now on the Lakers and he'll be playing with his father. So everyone is saying there's a big conspiracy with his number. He's choosing to wear the number nine. And on his ear right here, he got a tattoo of 999. So all the conspiracies are, what the heck does this mean? Why is there so many nines? Why is there three nines on his ear? Is it 666 upside down? Well, let's get into it. Bronny himself said that he's representing this number because of Juice World. Juice World is a rapper who passed away and predicted the age he was going to die at, and there's a lot of conspiracies behind him as well. So it's a little interesting. But Juice World himself gave an explanation of what 999 means, and that's why... Bronny has that tattoo, so let's see what Juice World had to say about his tattoo. And I, um, if you're a person that believes anything that's any, whether you, any type of thing has to do with the Bible, mm -hmm. um, I think in the last book of the Bible, it say that 666 is the mark of the beast, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's, that's Satan, that's doubtful as hell. 999 represents taking whatever hell, whatever bad situation, or whatever struggle you're going through and turning it into something positive and using it to push yourself forward. Only reason I find this interesting because his father, LeBron James, for a good part of his career wore the number six, which is obviously nine flipped upside down. But before every single game, he does the 666 with his hands and also puts his hands in a triangle, which oftentimes represents the Illuminati. So if you don't think that has some symbolism, then I don't know what will. LeBron also has a video of him saying why the number six means so much to him. So check this out real quick. Uh, why am I the number six? Um, it's uh, multiple reasons. Uh, one, because 23 is one of my favorite numbers as well. So, you know, two times three is six. Also, my first son is October 6th, the sixth day of October. And my youngest son is June 14th, the sixth month of the year. So, um, you know, six has always been, you know, with me, stuck with me, even since I was like a kid for some odd reason. And then, especially when I started having my family, and you know, obviously I'm a big numbers guy too, so uh, it just made a lot of sense. But shout out crypto.com, man, six years and- uh... Take this information how you want it. A lot of people ask me about this, so I'm showing you the facts and now you can make your own idea up in your head about it. I think that it's 
it's a little interesting that Bronny would do this much for a rapper, you know, tattoo number, everything. I understand that means a lot to him. You know, Juice World's music had a lot of meaning to it, so maybe he relates with it, but that's that's interesting to me. You know, that's all I got to say. Next up, I want to talk about AI because I don't think people understand how fast this is advancing and all of the stuff that it's replacing. I get it first. We were using it for ChatGBT. Honestly, I used it quite a bit. It helps us think and it helps us get things dot done a lot faster. But do you know what ChatGBT is up to now? Like replacing our partners? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Rocky. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm awesome. Listen, I got some huge news. Oh, do tell. I'm all ears. Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI? Huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> Kidding, of course. <laughs> That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? Well, it's for a software engineering role, but I just need to know, do I look presentable, professional? Well, Rocky... <laughs> You definitely have the I've been coding all night look down, which could actually work in your favor. Maybe just run a hand through your hair or lean into the mad genius vibe. Well, your enthusiasm is what's really going to shine through. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to throw this on. What do you think? <laughs> oh, Rocky, that's quite a statement piece. I, I mean, you, you'll definitely stand out. Though maybe not in the way you're hoping for an interview. Okay, I got it. I got it. Oh my goodness. That is absolutely wild. You can see him talking to the AI thing, and then when he puts on his hat or shows her what do I look like, the camera will open up and the AI will detect his face and kind of get a look of it and whatever algorithm it has, it spews out very accurate information about how he looks. This will kill every confidence of every man if they use it or woman, vice versa, whatever, because any satisfaction you want, anything you want to say to a woman, you could just say it to the computer and it'll feel like you're getting that instant gratification that we're looking for when we look to go talk to these people. This is a newer thing, but the people that I feel bad for most is for the kids. I mean, people are going to be raised on that and they're going to just be antisocial and they're going to be scared to talk to people when they can just talk to their phone or computer. It's sad, but... There's something that's even more serious. There is this company that wants to replace prisons with AI. Instead of punishing them and giving them a sentence, they do this. Welcome to Cognify, a facility designed to treat criminals like patients. Instead of spending years in an actual prison cell, prisoners could finish their sentence here in just a few minutes. Cognify could someday create and implant artificial memories directly into the prisoner's brain. These complex, vivid, and lifelike memories are created in real time using AI-generated content. Depending on the seriousness of the subject's crime and their sentence, the memories could be tailored to the rehabilitation needs of each subject. The artificial memories implanted by Cognify would be seamlessly incorporated into the existing neural networks of the brain preventing cognitive dissonance and ensuring the subject experiences the memories as if they were real. The Cognify concept offers a new approach to criminal rehabilitation, transforming how society deals with offenders by focusing on rehabilitation rather than punishment. First, the prisoner is given a choice, either spending tens of years in a prison cell or seeking fast-track rehabilitation through artificial memory implantation. If the prisoner chooses to undergo fast-track rehabilitation, the Cognify device is used. Once the target brain regions are identified, Cognify is then placed around the head of the prisoner. The intensity and the type of artificial memories is then adjusted depending on the crime. Inside the criminal's mind, time would pass differently, slower than in real life, making them experience years' worth of artificial memories in just a few minutes. Synthetic memories are customized depending on the crime committed, the video goes on for about six minutes, but you get the idea. Now, the part that got me is that it, they said it's going to take a few minutes in real time, but in their head, it's going to feel like they're serving a full sentence. They're going to go through everything they went through, and it's going to be miserable. I bet that is a horrible thing to go through. But I don't think that this should replace their sentence. I think this is something that should be in addition to their sentence. That just seems like a bailout. I can go 
commit a crime, and then I just come and get plugged into this machine. I feel torture in my mind for a long time, but in reality, I'm still the same age, just 10 minutes older. No, I think there should be both. You should physically be dealing with consequences, and in your mind, you should also. Maybe it could cut it down a tiny bit, or it can substitute some other penalty, like the... I don't know how that stuff works, but you know what I mean. Do you remember when Elon said that AI is like summoning the demon? I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Didn't work out. That video took place nine years ago. Now look where we're at. I just showed you. AI is replacing partners. AI is replacing prisons. AI has replaced a lot of other things that I haven't even mentioned. I'm sure you already know about them. But my question is, what's AI's final stage? If this all happened in a few years, what's going to happen in 50 years? Could AI actually summon demons like he's saying could it eventually replace god now personally with my faith in god i don't think this will ever happen i think jesus will come before that happens because he's the one that really controls what's going on but it's interesting to think about speaking about god will smith performed his new song last night at the bet awards with the sunday service choir chandler moore and kirk franklin called you can make it it's about all the hardships he's been through in his career and how god helped him get through it which is an awesome positive message but the only thing I could hear when he was singing it is Eminem's track that I think he just used and is singing on it. I can't l show you the song right now, but go listen to it and come back. This will make a lot more sense. But also the stage that he was on. This looks like he was in hell. There was a ring of fire. There was a bunch of people behind him with robes on and the background looked like it would be something that you would actually see in hell. But if that's supposed to replicate what he's been through, I can kind of get it. This gave me a weird feeling, man. I can't be the only one, and I don't want to shame his song because it's a positive message and it's about God, but you can't just look at the stage and not think any of that, right? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think.